Good morning, uh, Europe. Good afternoon uh, here in, in, in Vietnam. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Vietnam, the next destination for, for your business. This webinar is co-hosted by the French Chamber of Commerce and Industry, so the CCAV as we call it, and the Southeast Asia Intellectual Property SME Help Desk. My name is Adam Kulaksesian. I am the director of the, Chamber, the French Chamber of Commerce here in Vietnam. Before we start, uh, please note that we will have up to 10 minutes at the end of the webinar to answer questions. Uh, so you have this uh, tool here on the, on, the, on the software, so do not hesitate to ask your questions. If we don't have enough time to cover it all, uh, we will reach out to you by email. So again, don't, do not hesitate to share comments and questions. Uh, it's a very short format today, but uh, we can take time later after the, this presentation. Uh, of course, first I'd like to warmly thank the panelists uh, who are going to share their expertise today with us. Uh, on my right, uh, Mr. Hu Nam Nguyen, uh, Deputy General Director at the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Ho Chi Minh City, VCCI. Thank you very much for coming uh, today to, to our presentation. Uh, I'd like to uh, also uh, thank warmly uh, Dr. Marta Bettinazzi. Uh, Marta Bettinazzi is with us uh, online. Uh, Good morning, uh, Martha. Martha is intellectual property yeah. expert with the IPSME help desk. And um, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Yen Wu, uh, country manager of Rose Legal and chairwoman of the IPR committee of the Eurocham Vietnam, the European Chamber of Commerce in Vietnam. So without further uh, ado, I'll share a quick overview to start with, a quick introduction of the Vietnamese market and the business size between the European Union and Vietnam. So, um, as you can see, um, Vietnam on the right is stretching along the, the East Sea. Vietnam is strategically located in the heart of the ASEAN community. Uh, quick reminder, uh, ASEAN means Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It's a regional grouping that promotes economic, political, and security cooperation among its 10 members, Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and of course, Vietnam. This group actually is 9% of the world population, uh, and Vietnam is one of the fastest growing countries of the ASEAN community thus uh, one of the fa fastest uh, growing country in the world. Uh, Vietnam uh, experiences uh, a steady and uh, stable growth. Uh, you can see 6% uh, average GDP growth since 1990. Uh, Vietnam is 95 million inhabitants, uh, roughly. 51% of them are considered uh, active population, even though sometimes it's complicated to gather the right numbers, because there is a part of informal economy still. Vietnam is fully integrated into the global economy. Uh, there are 16, uh, three uh, still under negotiations, but 16 free trade agreements. As you can see, there they, they are some promising rankings uh, regarding uh, investments. Um, and the result of this and this uh, development is that Vietnam is off the list of poor countries in the world and joined the group of lower middle uh, income countries. Between 2002 and 2018, the poverty rate fell sharply from more than 70% to less than 6%. So I'd like to, to, to say a quick word about the, the you know, with the COVID-19, uh, we talk a lot about the accelerating manufacturing diversification and Vietnam is actually one of the top alternative uh, destinations to China. Um, th thanks to one uh, young, abundant, and uh, affordable workforce. Uh, I talked a little bit uh, about the ASEAN, but Vietnam is the second largest uh, labor market in ASEAN. Vietnam also is a top alternative destination uh, thanks to its socio-political stability, thanks to the strategic location in the middle of the ASEAN, as I said already, thanks to also developing infrastructures. Although still lacking, uh, it also means that uh, there are a lot of opportunities in uh, developing infrastructures and investment infra infrastructures in Vietnam. And uh, last but not least, we can talk about the good management of the COVID-19 crisis, and I'll give a few words about it later. So 
Vietnam is, of course, offering a lot uh, of opportunities in production, in transformation, but not only. And with this slide, I'd like to remind you so that Vietnam is, is an attractive market for foreign brands with the rapidly uh, emerging middle class in Vietnam, uh, becoming more and more urban. And it's, a, it's an emerging uh, market and it offers significant opportunities for uh, uh, European companies. I'll give you an example. Some numbers say that 50% of the population in Vietnam should be considered middle class by 2035. We also say that every year uh, Vietnam experiences one more million middle class uh, population. And uh, I'd like to underline the fact that um, the digital consumer population is also growing in Vietnam, especially in COVID-19 time. In 2020, more than 70% of total population is using internet in Vietnam. It's quite a lot. So now a few words about the, the, the trade balance. During the period 2009-2019, uh, uh, Vietnam exports uh, increased at an average annual rate of 19% from 57 billion USD in 2009 to 318 billion USD in 2019. So I also want to underline the fact that when we say Vietnamese exportations, it also means uh, foreign companies based in Vietnam, and we can think about electronic leaders. Of course, Samsung is very uh, present here in Vietnam in different kind of sectors, textile, footwear, and electronics, as I said. On the other hand, uh, Vietnam imports reached 271 billion USD in 2019. So as you can see, the trade balance is very positive uh, for Vietnam. And I'm not sure the, the EU-Vietnam uh, free trade agreement will change this trend, and I'll talk about it later. Regarding the FDI, so as I said before, uh, introducing this presentation, I said that Vietnam was already an open economy. Vietnam attracted 143 billion USD in cumulative FDI over the past 10 years. 60% of this FDI went, to, uh, went into manufacturing, electronics, textiles, footwear, automobile parts. By 2030, Vietnam aims to attract 50 billion USD of FDI. So FDI has been a key driver of Vietnam's economic growth. And to achieve these goals, this 2030 goal, I say that Vietnam is uh, working on liber liberalization through free market reforms, but also diversification and shift to high value added industries to attract new types of FDI. Quick top five and uh, no European countries in the, in, in, the, in the top five investors, Singapore, South Korea, China, Japan and Thailand, so you see it's a lot of uh, Asian countries uh, uh, in the top five on the, in the FDI, but it might change with the FDI coming. So successful management of COVID-19, total case 1,100. For those uh, of you that are in Europe and myself, I'm French, it's super impressive. So now, sorry, updated, uh, updated uh, numbers, 1,145 cases. If I'm not mistaken, today is the 50th day, so 5-0 day without any uh, community transmission, which is a, an incredible performance. Um, gradually, uh, Vietnam is reopening flight connections for investors and experts, working a lot on the quarantine experience. And despite the complicated context, Vietnam is part of the minority of countries that have maintained positive growth. As you can see, the 2020 forecast is a GDP growth rate at 1.8%. The country is accelerating uh, active measures to achieve dual objectives of one, economic development and disease, disease control, moving toward uh, what has been called safe coexistence with COVID-19. So now I'd like to talk about the EU-Vietnam business ties. EU has always been amongst leading FDI partners in Vietnam, uh, so considered as EU and not country per country. EU investors are active in 52 out of the 63 provinces in Vietnam. So, of course, the capital city in the north, Hanoi, the, the, the economic uh, booming uh, city in the south, uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Um, at the regional level, Vietnam is now the EU's second most important trading partner among, again, the ASEAN members, uh, supporting Indonesia and Thailand in the recent years. The EU mainly exports, as you can see on the, on the, on the picture here, the EU mainly exports goods uh, are machinery and transport equipment, chemicals, pharmaceutical products, agriculture products. And this sector, of course, will see the greatest benefits from the VFTA. 
Lately, the EU investment has been very visible in high-tech industries, telecommunication, real estate, construction, renewable energy, food processing, and pharmaceuticals. On the other hand, Vietnam's main exports to the EU are telephone sets, electronic products, footwear, textiles, clothing, coffee, rice, seafood, furniture. From 2001 to 2018, Vietnam's exports to the EU have uh, steadily grown at an average rate, as uh, you can see, of 16%. Now I'll, I'll give a very quick uh, uh, presentation of what is EVFTA. I think a lot of you know already what is this. EVFTA is the most, so Europe, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam Free Trade Agreement, it's the most comprehensive and ambitious trade and investment agreement that the EU has ever concluded with a developing country in Asia. It is the second agreement in the ASEAN region, just after Singapore, and it will, of course, as I said, intensify the bilateral relations between Vietnam and the EU. As you can see, 99% of customs duties will be removed between EU and Vietnam. And actually, already 65% of import tax on EU consumer goods to Vietnam have already disappeared because the EVFTI entered into, entered into force 1st August 2020. Um, as you can see on the right, um, it's not all, only about uh, customs, even though it's, it's a big part and a good illustration of what it is. Uh, it's also um, a new generation bilateral agreement. It includes rules on working conditions, sustainable development, intellectual property, and this is why we're very happy to discuss today with the experts of intellectual property, and it will enable EU investors to tender for government procurement. The full implementation of this free trade agreement will boost the business ties between the EU countries and Vietnam and create a lot of opportunities. Uh, this is why we wanted uh, all of us today to share some expertise uh, on this very short format again. And uh, feel free to ask questions about this good presentation. I'll give you a a 10 second presentation about what is the French Chamber of Commerce, 250 members, uh, 18 bicultural employees, 8 services dedicated to our companies, and 1,000 members through the Eurocham community as I developed. The Chamber of Commerce, uh, the French Chamber of Commerce in the world are uh, 126 in 95 countries with a network of 37,000 members around the world. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this presentation. Now I'd like to give the floor to Mr. Unam Nguyen, Deputy General Director of the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, Mr. Nguyen will uh, guide us through the tariff preferences and rules of origin under EBFTA, which is a crucial and essential point to understand and to uh, benefit from this EBFTA. And we are very lucky to have Mr. Nguyen with us today. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon uh, in Vietnam and uh, good morning in uh, Brazil, right? Uh, so I'm um, going to um, have to, uh, a chance to uh, to uh, to share with you about uh, how to utilize the preferential tariff uh, of the EU and Vietnam free trade agreements. As you know, the the FTA between Vietnam and EU is into uh, into uh, into and Enter into force uh, from uh, 1st of August uh, this year. So it is uh, time to, uh, uh, to export and import the uh, turnover between Vietnam and EU will be uh, increased uh, rapidly in the near future. So, how, how, can, uh, how can you utilize the preference service? So, now I give you some. Uh, the key point that is you can uh, uh, understand how to uh, to utilize the cherry. Um, in my presentation, there's a uh, four four points. Uh, that is a short introduction of the BCC. I just one uh, slide only, and the second one is a uh, easy and Vietnam cherry schedule, and third one is uh, how to determine the origin of my uh, specific product. And the last one is uh, how to uh, certify the origin of the good that you uh, can uh, get preference from uh, the, upon the uh, EU uh, Vietnam FTA. Uh, 
uh, as you see, it's Vietnam uh, VCCI Chamber of Commerce and Industry uh, to uh, help uh, some uh, function is to uh, represent uh, Vietnam's business community uh, for promotion and protection uh, uh, of its uh, legit uh, interest in domestic and international uh, relations. And the second one is uh, to promote uh, the development of the business community to promote and support investment, scientific, uh, scientific, uh, technological or cooperation, and all the business activities uh, of the uh, business community in Vietnam and abroad uh, to promote and help to, to build harmonious labor relations uh, in enterprise. And uh, BCCI have uh, some uh, 10 locations, the headquarters in Hanoi and seven branches in uh, Haiphong City, An Province, uh, Thanh Hoa uh, Province, Da Nang City, Ho Chi Minh City, Barrier Vung Tau Province, and Kanto City. Uh, and uh, the last is uh, two representatives in uh, Khánh Hoa Province and uh, Binh Chuan Province. Uh, most of the town location is uh, located in the, the business or tourist uh, well, font uh, location. Uh, that is uh, just uh, some brief of my information of uh, our office is the VCCI. And now uh, we come to the EU and Vietnam tariff schedule. Uh, actually, for the tariff schedule, that is like a dictionary. So it depends on the product, what kind of product and what is the heading of the product so you can check uh, the, 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 the rate of the tariff. Uh, before you can uh, before you can uh, see the all information, uh, you are suggested to uh, look at the website. Uh, uh, this website, uh, there's uh, every, every information of the EVFTA. So, I just focus on two chapters only. The chapter, chapter two is uh, uh, national treatment and market uh, access for the wood. That means you can track the Vietnam and EU uh, tariff schedule. And, uh, and the chapter, chapter 13, uh, chapter 13 is trade and sustainable development. Uh, including the rule of origin or the, the good uh, ice cottage uh, inside the uh, FTA. So you you are suggested to uh, visit uh, this website so all the information in uh, on it. Uh, the tariff schedule of the union is the uh, easy. Uh, it's uh, appendix two A one. So you can see the structure of the tariff uh, schedule. Uh, for the first column is the uh, heading. That means a uh, harmonized system code for each product. So each product have a uh, each uh, specific uh, heading. And the second uh, column is a description of the rules. And the third uh, column is base rate. Base, base rate means the the tariff rate. That's according to the uh, MFN uh, under the WTO. And uh, the, the, fourth, uh, cap, the fourth column is a category. This means the tariff is uh, removed or eliminated, or maybe some percent, or maybe some something else. I, I will explain to you later. You can see the category is a A, category is a B5, or category is A. That is that is structure of the, the tariff schedule for both the Vietnam and uh, EU. But for the Vietnam, for Vietnam, is 
and you can check at appendix 2A2. So the structure is the same, but there's um, just four colors only, but for easy uh, stereo is the five column. Just the, the last column just for some explanation or some notes only. Uh, to just focus on the uh, first four column only. Sometimes you can see the, the base rate here is very high. For example, for the car is a uh, 70%. Okay. So here's the, the tariff schedule of Vietnam and EU. So when you have a uh, specific the heading that is a uh, data scores, you can check uh, from uh, this appendix. But how to uh, get reference uh, from the appendix 2A2 and 2A1? We go to another. So here, the meaning of the category is A is means eliminated entirely from the date of the entry into force of the agreement. For the B3, means remove in all equal annual state beginning of the date of the entry into force of the agreement. I can explain about B3. For example, uh, you have uh, the, the, the ter tariff rate is uh, maybe 10%. You can uh, divide it into four, into four. So the pause year after the EVFTA uh, affected, it will be zero equally. You can say uh, divide just four only. So you can see, you can know this year how many uh, percent, and next year how many percent, and next year. That means. And uh, B5 is also like a six equal annual, and B7 is the three equal annual. And variety of the categories you can uh, read uh, on the screen. But here, uh, how to understand, how to determine uh, mean the origin of uh, a specific product. This origin, uh, rule of origin is very complicated for everybody, even though some people is the uh, expert of the rule of origin, but sometimes it's the very uh, cannot understand, cannot know uh, clear about the, the, the meaning. So for this rule of origin, many, many people um, will get st uh, stuck, but there's a variety, there's the my, 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 my system that each company have uh, some product only, not all. So you know you are uh, not needed to uh, to to look or to read all the uh, rule of origin. Just focus on your product only. So it's a very simple for you. Uh, here's the, the turnover of the import and export between Vietnam and EU. As you can see that uh, we uh, export to the EU is the um, more than 50 uh, billion US dollar uh, in 2019, and we import from the EU just uh, near uh, 50 billion US dollar. So, if the, the when the EVFT is uh, into post, uh, of course the turnover of the import and export will be increased. Uh, in coming soon. But back to the Vietnam side, I can give you some uh, information about the rate of the utilization of the tariff preferences under the FTA uh, that the Vietnam uh, uh, are using. You can see here. Yeah, 
so in 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 general in general Việt Nam Việt Nam just uh, utilize 37 on uh, two percent but in comparison with the uh, or for example when we uh, uh, export to the EU, maybe this year is uh, 60, uh, 60 billion US dollar. If we do to like just 70, uh, 37 on two percent only, so maybe we just uh, do to like about more than 20 billion US dollar. But the rest is uh, we cannot uh, do to like anything. So why the rate? of utilization of tariff preference from the FTA in Vietnam is still limited. So here the key. Understand the EVFTA rule of origin is the key. Because if the product cannot qualify, cannot qualify, cannot meet the order requirements of the rule of origin of the EU, uh, yeah, EVFTA, you can not uh, get preference. Uh, sorry. Structure of the rule of origin under the EVFTA is that the rule of origin. The rule of origin uh, divided in two, two cases. First one is a wholly obtained. That means all the product is uh, uh, harvested or cultivated uh, in Vietnam. Uh, for example, vegetable we have cultivated in Vietnam and have it and export to the EU, it is wholly obtained product. And the second one is not wholly obtained, that means in the product, you see some the material that is not originating in Vietnam or not originating in EU. So it's called not wholly obtained. For the not wholly obtained, uh, we, we can call it a BSR, that is a product specific rule. And for this uh, kind of product, it divided into four, four cases. That means uh, the value or at volume uh, criteria, that means a percentage. Second one is the change in tariff heading. Uh, sometimes we, uh, we can call it change uh, in uh, uh, LS. And the third one is a uh, process criteria. Each of uh, each uh, product have uh, one criteria. For example, the garment it it, it uh, requested the 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 fabric is uh, uh, with women or knitted in Vietnam, for example. And the um, last one is a working or processing in uh, carrying out on the holy of chain material. Means when you harvest it in Vietnam, like a vegetable, and to process it into like a canned vegetable, for example, that means this uh, it fall in this case. Here you can uh, read in the EV uh, FTA rule of origin uh, the definition of the wholly obtained product. That means you must your product must follow must comply with all the uh, from A to M like mineral product extracted from its soil or from its base or maybe uh, like a plants and vegetable product grow and harvested or gather uh, in Vietnam. And C is a live animal born and raised there. Sometimes we have uh, some uh, funny arguments about uh, this point, a live animal born and raised there. For example, the, the, the chicken. When we uh, imported uh, egg, chicken egg from maybe outside Vietnam, and then it's the uh, the, the, the act is a hot in Vietnam. So in this case, it's a, not act is a is a born or the act is a born in outside Vietnam. So for this kind, uh, we have uh, some argument, but there's no uh, no answer like a chicken is a 
bumpers or the, the height is bumper. Sometimes like that. <laughs> um, then uh, another uh, rule is that in the prison working or processing for more from the all the following operation shall be considered as insufficient working or processing. So in this case, cannot confer the status of the origin. As you can see the order process that cannot be considered. And now we we focus on the how to understand the requirements of the EVFT rule of origin. Here, as you can see, when you have a product exported to Vietnam or from Vietnam to the EU, you can see the annex one, that is uh, like the definitions of the, the rule. And to go to the annex two, that is means the specific criteria for each product. So for the first column is the heading like a schedule, and the second one is the description of the rules, and the third column is criteria. That means the good must comply with all the requirements of the column three. So maybe you can see on the chapter seven, uh, chapter seven, seven, eight, sorry, chapter uh, 87 is uh, in the heading 87. Uh, it, um, 11 the motor motorbike so the criteria is a uh, manufacturer from uh, material of any uh, heading except that uh, product uh, for this case you can uh, understand that for all the components to 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 assembly in the finished product cannot the same is the seven uh, a711 if the component is outside of A711, the wood qualify, but the component is uh, have a heading is A711, that means the woods do not qualify the wood. So in this case, that uh, product cannot uh, get preference uh, tariff from the EV at yet. Yeah, in that, in addition, uh, you are also recommended to uh, Understand the related rule as accumulations of the origin rule, uh, relaxations uh, to the origin rule, like a tolerant uh, rule is in the EV FTA. But another FTA that the Vietnam Chon uh, we can call is uh, uh, the minimis, or uh, in easy you can use another dead row basin rule. And the uh, last one. We have uh, just one slide only. So uh, for the EV, EVFTA, um, in the, 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 the discussion between uh, the EU and Vietnam side, and the certificate of origin to uh, must be uh, declared by the exporter. Uh, for the Vietnam side, uh, we we do not uh, accept uh, for this case uh, right now. Uh, so in the issue, you can uh, you can uh, the ice water can uh, uh, be uh, approved approved ice water. In this case, the ice water can uh, self certify the product. That means the ice water no need to go to uh, the authority to uh, apply for a certificate of origin. You can see the link uh, below. And in Vietnam. Now you cannot uh, sell certification. Uh, uh, so when a good exported to the easy to want to get a very uh, preference, you must go to uh, the Ministry of Trade and Industry to apply for the certificate of origin score EUR1, uh, and you can uh, visit uh, the website below to for more information. So that is my. Uh, uh, presentation. I, I hope that uh, my information will be helpful to uh, to your work. And thank you for listening.
Mr. Hunam, thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, again, uh, it's quite a general presentation. Mr. Mr. Hunam Nguyen is a specialist of the rules of origin of this EVFTA, and uh, we are lucky to work. Uh, the CCAV team uh, works uh, with uh, the Vietnam Chamber of Commerce and Industry in Vietnam. So again, do not hesitate to ask questions about specification uh, problems you might have in details, and we'd be happy to come back to you. And thank, thanks to the expertise of uh, VCCI and the expertise of CCAV in terms of implementing EVFTA, we can answer your questions. Thank you so much for these very, very interesting insights. Um, now, I'd like to give the floor to uh, Dr. Marta Bettinazzi. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. I hope ah. you can see me and my screen right now. Uh, yeah, Marta, Marta, thank you so much for joining us from, from Italy. And uh, Dr. Marta Bettinazzi will explain how to protect your products. Now we understand how to benefit from EVFTA, but what is very important, uh, and sometimes a bit scary for, for the uh, European companies is how to protect your products, services, and of course, innovations in the Vietnamese market. And now we will have uh, two presentations in a row regarding uh, uh, IPR in, uh, in uh, Vietnam. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Okay, thank you. Um, I will uh, be as short as possible. The idea of this presentation is just to give you a brief in a introduction about uh, the IP landscape in Vietnam and uh, and then I will leave the floor to our experts to actually compare what are the innovation that comes from the FTA. Uh, very, very shortly, uh, we are, as the uh, Southeast Asia IPR SME Help Desk are a free service from the European Union. We offer an outline and as you can see, we offer and deliver presentations. But let's keep this part and uh, usually I I, at this point, I, I ask some questions during the presentation. Today, we are a little bit short on time, so uh, I will not launch the poll, but I uh, encourage all of you to think about this question for a second. Uh, you see on your screen this uh, Nuevo Sangria, and uh, my question will be, where is this product from? And actually, it's from Vietnam, because it's been made uh, by a company in, uh, in the lab. Uh, what happened? The problem is uh, that this story shows very well what can happen if you don't protect your trademark or in this case even your geographical indication uh, because it's not obvious for uh, a Vietnamese examiner that a sangria is a geographical indication so it's a generic name for, for a trademark. Um, what happened was that this company from, from Vietnam decided to uh, start using and also registering uh, this uh, Sangria uh, trademark. And um, the Spanish importers uh, didn't know about that until they found it on the shelves. And the problem is that if this uh, company uh, succeeded in, the, in registering Sangria as a trademark, at least uh, they could, even if maybe they, they will not to, decide not to, but they could block other people from using the same trademark, so from using the name Sangria at the end of the day. So these are the kind of risks you, you, uh, you can incur if you don't protect yourself. But what should I do? What should you do for protecting? Um, first of all, you should understand what are your rights and then uh, learn, learn how to register in Vietnam. And also, please remember that there is a lot of mobility within the ASEAN market. So uh, you should be also aware of what is going on, for example, in Thailand or Indonesia, if possible. And uh, register, of course. And finally, monitor the market, market for infringements. We will have more ab about infringement and possible uh, remedies on the other presentation presentation, but it's just to you to know that it's something you should be proactive about. But what we, uh, what are the options? Like, okay, you have your beautiful product and um, you want to protect it. So what are your options? What should, what should you do? Uh, first of all, um, the obvious thing probably is to think about your trademark. So the logo, the branding, uh, the startup tone, for example, or like music associated with your product, uh, the scent, the colors. Uh, and then um, going up to another layer, uh, you can consider patent. Uh, patents are usually 
uh, the most famous in a way, like uh, kind of IP, like what every company wants, but it's not always the best option, but definitely if you manage to secure a patent, it's a good advantage. And uh, patent can, can cover many things, uh, including processes and um, op operating systems and other uh, computer-based invention, but we, uh, I will tell you more about this later. Uh, copyright uh, is not just for movies or music or uh, pictures. It's also for software and also for the content of, of your website, for example. This is also um, um, a relatively, uh, uh, it's, it's a way of expressing yourself, even if you don't think about your website that way many times, um, but it's also protected. And also the images that come with your website or with your brochure or your advertisement, everything is under copyright for that. Uh, industrial design protects the shape of your product, uh, but also icons on computer screens and graphic user interfaces. Not so much in Vietnam right now, but it's an international trend and we hope that they will be there at one point and finally there is trade secret that doesn't need to be registered and it's a very good way to protect your know-how let's go a little bit more into details uh about starting with trademarks i mean you see on the screen one of the most famous one probably a trademark is in general a sign that identifies and distinguish the the, the product all one a company from the one of another company, please be aware that it has to be a, capable of distinguishing. In other words, you cannot call your uh, water water or your uh, computer computer. It will not be distinctive. But I know it seems a little bit funny, like why I should be so uh, trivial, but actually coming out with a very distinctive trademark that is still memorable is not an easy task. Um, in general, okay, not, not distinguishable uh, trademark are not possible to be protected, but also you should be aware that misleading signs, uh, um, signs that go against morality or public order uh, or that include state emblems cannot be registered. So it's not just the distinctiveness. How to pro protect your, how to register your trademark in Vietnam? This I will go quite fast, uh, but it's just to you to understand that first of all, there is uh, a search moment when you try to understand if your trademark is available <laughs> and no one has registered. And then you file the application uh, with the intellectual property office and um, there will be a formal examination that's saying if your documents are correct and, and then uh, there will be a publication that opens the, the time for, for an opposition and then in theory within nine months from the publication the trademark should be examined uh, from a um, substantive point of view and uh, in reality it usually the, our whole process takes around two years uh, of course, it depends on the case. If there is an opposition, it can be even longer. If it's a very straightforward one, it can be shorter, but to give you an idea. Uh, the basic fees are uh, more or less around 54 euros. And uh, for multi-class, you, you will end up paying more. And um, if you play, play uh, if you uh, claim priority from a previous application, you will have to pay more. I want to say just one thing about this multi-class and um, more and of six goods and services, etc. Because uh, as I said, your product, your trademark needs to be distinctive, but uh, is not uh, protected in all for all the goods in the world, unless you register for it. So if you are producing, uh, for example, uh, cell phones, you should register your trademark for cell phones and maybe for another couple of nearly uh, related classes. Same for chairs or whatever are you producing. You should evaluate quite closely which class you want. You want. And 
uh, also considered to extend to more than one class. So this is just uh, a small trick that can be useful and can solve some problems later if uh, there is confliction of trademarks. Um, now, this is a question I, I really want to ask. So we are going to launch a poll this time. Oh, I, I gave you the answer. Oops. I hope it was not seen. Uh, can we launch the poll? Yeah, exactly. Is the question is uh, what is the uh, an international trademark? I would like you to to vote. Um, <clears throat> um, I will appreciate if you find some seconds to to express your preference. Uh, usually, I say there is no uh, right or wrong. In this case, there is. That is right or wrong, but I, I would like to see what's your understanding of this uh, concept. Um, I give you another 10 seconds from now, uh, and then we close the poll because we are anyhow short on time. And uh, yeah, even if not many have voted, I, I would like to close the poll in like now and show the results. So I see that many of you uh, think is a, is a trademark protected in certain country, which is, uh, it's, um, it, how do I say, it's not completely wrong, it's not the completely wrong answer, which was A, it's completely wrong, uh, and C is the actual right one, because um, the point is that an international trademark per se does not exist. What exists is the trademark, the, the Madrid system that helps you to uh, file what at the end of the day is a national application and will also help you in the managing of these trademarks. Uh, your trademark application will go from your national office to WIPO in Switzerland and from there all over the world where you on the countries you require. So it's not automatic that you will end up protected in 122 countries, it will not automatically be protected anywhere. You have to pick up the countries and those offices in those countries have the possibility to say yes or no to the application. They cannot do it for formal reasons. So once your application is done, it's supposed to be formally correct, but they can still oppose for other reasons. So please keep in mind that this is a very good option if you are extending your business to Southeast Asia, for example, as a region or like or in, on outside your country anyhow, uh, but please consider that is not uh, is not automatic. You still have to keep an eye on it. Uh, I will um, I will now go to. Are you sorry, guys? Are you hearing and see me again? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so you see again my screen. Okay, sorry, uh, there was uh, a little bit of confusion. So now we discussed uh, trademark, and uh, now I, I would like to um, introduce you briefly to patent. As I said, uh, many people uh, ident identify IP with patent, um, but um, in reality, it's just one of the options, as I showed before. It's a kind of uh, right that gives you the exclusive right to prevent others from processing, using, selling, manufacturing, and importing the patent and invention or offering any of those things within a territory. What does it mean? It means that if you own a patent in Europe, for example, uh, even if someone produces your patent invention in China or Vietnam, they cannot sell it to Europe. And uh, the other way around, if you own a, a patent in Vietnam, uh, if someone produces it abroad in other countries, it, they cannot sell it or import it in Vietnam because you own the exclusive right. Uh, this is very important, like it's the way the patents are strictly territorial. And uh, um, just very briefly, a patent has to be new. And to, in order to be new, it means it never been it, it has never been disclosed. And uh, I would like to, I would have liked to ask you a question, but we skip the poll for this time. I want you to think about this. You the patent has to be new. If you have a patent from 2013 in Europe, can you patent in Vietnam? And the answer is no. Why? Because your patent is not new. 
<laughs> it has been patented. I mean, for patented, I mean, in this case, uh, published uh, during the process of patenting in Europe. So this is very important because this will uh, um, this will explain to you why it's so important to think ahead. You have to think, okay, I have this innovation. I have it. It's useful for me now in France. Should I bring it abroad? Can I patent still abroad? And all this stuff has to be planned. So you have to be careful when you do that. Uh, as for uh, patent in Vietnam, uh, very, very shortly, you have to pay, uh, uh, file the application in front of the IP Vietnam. And uh, uh, application of for against applicants must be uh, filed through a qualified agent or patent attorney. This is very important, meaning uh, you always have to consider that you have to pay uh, for these services. Uh, there is uh, an e-filling system, but uh, the, um, most of the documents still have to be sent by post, so it's not particularly relevant for you. And uh, the approximately approx uh, uh, approximation of the fees is 76 uh, euros, but um, is plausible uh, if not sure that you will end up paying a little bit more because there are some intermediate steps that is going to be uh, covered. Uh, and now we go from, from patent to industrial design, which in some countries is considered a part of patent. And uh, I would like you for a second to appreciate the shape of that motorbike, because this is exactly the point. Because industrial design protects you, the, uh, protects the shape of your, uh, of your product. And this is a good example, it's a Vespa. And um, <clears throat> it is important that it still has to be novel or new and have some individual character what does it mean it means that if your bottle for example your packaging looks exactly like every other bottle in the world no that's not a design but if you come up with something very clever uh, think about uh, perfume they usually have this very intricate shaped bottle like like high heels or feminine legs etc um, those are designs uh, we can discuss about the beauty of that, but is the way it is. In Vietnam, um, the basic fees are again quite quite low. But please remember that this works a little bit like a patent, so you still need an agent for that. So you also have to think about that. And finally, uh, um, different from patent, usually the novelty, even if it's supposed to be uh, internationally new, it's uh, evaluated in a less uh, strict way. Uh, I would like to spend just two seconds talking about copyright, mostly because uh, copyright is the easiest and faster way to protect your computer uh, software uh, based um, because it covers you from uh, illegal copying. And uh, it still has to be original and the only protect expression, not ideas, this makes a huge different difference. I, I don't have time to get too much into details, but this can be very relevant when it comes to, especially when it comes to software. And um, just some data, copyright exists from the comp uh, the, uh, the complexion of the of the of the opera. So uh, please consider that uh, you the registration is recommended but is not needed. Um, and this is also why it costs so so few um, because it's not um, needed. It's just for proof. And uh, now we enter about in the most uh, maybe interesting part, uh, which I would like to cover very 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 shortly, is just the idea. Uh, now we saw all the IPs as cost, uh, IP rights as cost. Uh, I would like to also shift the attention to the fact that uh, having your IP protected uh, opens you uh, to a profitable uh, kind of cooperation with your local partner. For example, through licensing or franchising, we will help you to cover uh, a bigger market uh, than what you can do with your own uh, uh, resources. But also like joint venture or merchandising are very good ways 
to um, exploit your IP, your intellectual property, uh, but you have to do it in a safe way. And by safe, it means write your agreement in a clear way and possibly in Vietnamese. Of course, we are discussing Vietnam. Uh, for transferring of technology, so if you are not just giving them the authorities the license to use your trademark but you are also transferring them the know-how um on how to build your machine uh, please consider that this has to be registered with ip vietnam and also remember that secrecy it's key uh especially when exploiting new markets because uh you cannot always uh, have a patent on your invention due to the limitation we discussed before. So you will probably need uh, at least to keep secret part of your production or some of the details in order to avoid copycats, that's clear. Uh, this is a case uh, about uh, licensing and uh, this also connect with uh, the class uh, problem I mentioned before. Uh, basically, there was this European fashion boutique chain uh, that uh, opened a, an outlet in um, in Vietnam, and uh, they entered an exclusive uh, license agreement. Uh, the problem was that uh, the local uh, partner uh, started to uh, breach basically the contract and the European company was not happy about that, uh, guess why, um, and they tried to uh, solve the contract and uh, find a new partner. But then they discovered, the European discovered that, uh, yes, they own the trademark for uh, the clothing production, but they didn't register it for retail. So they were not able to simply shift to another distributor because they can only distribute to through this company that was owning their trademark. Uh, of course, there was a litigation and uh, uh, it ended up with um, an agreement. And uh, the agreement was that the European boutique has to pay the local company in order to claim back their trademark. So what we learn from this experience, first of all, uh, be careful in general, uh, but also be prepared. So draft your uh, IP clause in a very clear way, meaning uh, saying that they cannot register your IP for any kind of product or any class. Also register your trademark for as many classes as possible. And uh, um, remember that it's it, otherwise it will take you a lot of time and it's very expensive. Let's wrap up everything uh, very, very quickly, as quickly as I can. Intellectual property is not just a cost, it's an asset. It helps building your reputation, strengthening your position on the market. It attracts investors, thinks about uh, startups and patents, for example. Um, you Once you have registered, you can safely use your uh, IP as a as a piece of exchange in, in, in the course of, a, of an agreement. Um, and at the end of the day, intellectual property is money. And finally, if you only have to remember one thing out of my presentation, registration is always less expensive than litigation, which is my motto. And uh, with this, I will uh, leave the floor to uh, our expert. And um, I thank you. you all for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Marta Bettinazzi, IP expert. Uh, joining us from Italy today for this presentation. So we had a presentation about EVFTA. We know more about EVFTA. Um, we know more uh, about uh, intellect intellectual property in Vietnam. And now I think it, we will uh, go and, and give the floor to uh, um, to Mrs. Yen Vu, country manager of Rules Legal Vietnam and chairwoman of IPR committee at Eurocham, to address the question how EVFTA is changing the intellectual property in Vietnam. EVFTA, IPR in Vietnam. And now, uh, Mrs. Wu, I give you the floor to, to know more about the macro understanding maybe about this question. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Adam. And thanks very much, Mara, for your excellent uh, introduction about, um, about IP. So um, in my presentation today, um, I will try to, to keep it short, um, given the time constraints. So these are the the main things that I'm going to talk about um, today. 
so very quickly introduce um, the IP landscape of Vietnam so you have um, some uh, preliminary information about what it looks like um, in terms of IP protection and enforcement um, in Vietnam and then I will introduce some uh, key changes um, that already in place um, so already enter into force in Vietnam to implement the EU FTA um, and then introducing some uh, upcoming key changes to the IP landscape um, and then finally we will look at two case studies. Um, so in general um, Vietnam just joined um, some international treaties recently um, the most major ones are the CPTPP um, and then the FTA that we are talking about, um, which is entering into force um, from 1st of August um, and which uh, results in a major overhaul um, or major amendment of the IP um, legal system and practice in Vietnam. Um, so this slide, um, you will see that the IP system in Vietnam is fairly young, especially compared to the most countries in Europe. Um, so the first legislation in IP was issued in 1981, um, around 40 years ago. Um, and we, we only have the, the unified law on, on intellectual property in 2006 when we entered um, or a member of the uh, World Trade Organization um, and then that law on IP amend was amended um, two times in 2009 and then last year. Um, in, so in terms of filing statistics, um, so this is the total number of filings um, in Vietnam made by both foreign applicants um, as well as Vietnamese applicants. So you will see in this pie chart, um, the majority of it is trademarks, accounts for 82%, um, and then follows by patents, 12%, um, and then industrial design, 5%, and then utility solutions, just only 1%. And um, these statistics um, was at last year, 2019. And for the first uh, nine months of this year, even though uh, we were heavily impacted by COVID-19, uh, but from our quick looking at the online database of IP Vietnam, um, the filing statistics are not um, really significantly decreased, uh, but so it looks quite stable. Um, in this chart, you will see the, the top filers countries into Vietnam. Um, and over the years, you will see the trend. Um, so the, the yellow line here is from Japan. Um, Japan is an, usually number one or number two for investor into Vietnam. And, and the filing coming from Japan um, steadily increased over the years and always on the rise trend. Um, unfortunately, no country from Europe um, is within the uh, top five uh, Others, but um, hope to see one or two or maybe three coming up soon. So, um, as you know, because Vietnam have a quite relatively young um, IP framework, um, so there's certainly some IP challenges. First of all, there is delay in registration process for IP rights. So, Dr. Mata already mentioned that it may take around two years to register your trademark, but in practice, it, it may be a little bit longer, um, maybe two years and, and a half, or if you are lucky, you can get it um, in two years. There is also some serious problems of counterfeiting and copyright piracy. Um, so a lot of counterfeits um, and in IP infringement um, because you know there is not really a sufficient deterrent effect of sanctions against IP infringement. Um, as well as, you know, the officials are relatively inexperienced in handling um, IP cases. Also, um, this is sometimes a plus, um, but it also can be regarded as a minus point um, of, the, of the IP framework, which is Vietnam has a complex IP enforcement system, 
with lots of options for IP owners to enforce their rights. Um, but lots of clients coming to see us and say, we don't know what to do because uh, basically there are too many options and they don't know which one is right for them. So um, now I will go through the, the changes that Vietnam already made. Um, to implement uh, CPTPP uh, as well as the EVFTA in terms of setting protection standard for IP rights um, and also for enforcement of IP rights. So, so first up for trademark, um, Vietnam introduced a new ground for invalidate a trademark registration. So for example, if um, there is a third party uh, register your rights um, and you would like to cancel the trademark registration. And so this is the new ground um, that you can base on to challenge the validity of this mark. So the new thing is um, before you can use the same ground, but uh, you, you will face the, or, or you used to face a registration in time um, that you must prove these misleading use occur at the time where the trademark was granted. Um, so, for example, if the trademark was granted in 2000, then um, you must prove that all the evidence of, uh, of infringement or the, um, the, the evidence you use to challenge this restriction uh, must be around 2000. But now uh, this restriction is removed. Um, so even evidence um, of misleading use occurs after the registration, then um, you can still able to challenge the validity of GMAT registration. For GIs, um, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you would know about this. Um, once the EVHGA comes into force, there will be direct protection um, for 169 European GIs um, and also 39 Vietnamese GIs in, uh, protected in Europe. Um, and especially the European GIs will enjoy the broadest scope of protection for wines and spirits. Um, for example, if GIs are accompanied by expressions such as kite, style, or imitation, um, then they still protect it. For industrial designs, the good news is Vietnam just joined the HEC agreement, so you can file uh, the what they call industrial design um, via the international registration system since 1st of January this year. Um, this can be quite effective um, and very user friendly because you only need to do one application, um, but your design can be protected in 19 countries and the fees is um, so you can control your budget much better than before Vietnam joining HAC. Um, so for pattern, um, the new thing is uh, there is a scheme to compensate the patent owner because of the delay in granting marketing authorization. Um, so the EVFGA um, actually foresees that there is patent term extension um, as a, a makeup uh, for, for the rights um, if the owner of the patent face delay um, in administrative procedure. So um, under the, the, the law that is already in fact, um, if you know there is a delay more than 24 months following the date of filing application for marketing authorization, then the owner of the patent is um, entitled to demand a compensation. This is mainly applied for pharmaceutical patents. Uh, turning to enforcement, these are a very uh, important changes to the current system. The first one is unjustified infringement claim. Um, so in a lot of countries, um, th there is re regulation on unjustified infringement claim. Uh, but Vietnam just introduced it last year, um, which means that, you know, as IP owners, we must obtain enough evidence of infringement before we're taking any actions. Otherwise, we will face um, with counteractions coming from the other party. Um, and we must use adequate wording in cease and desist letter uh, to send to allegedly infringer um, in order to avoid this possible risk. 
um, the second uh, change, which is also very important, is that the plaintiff must com compensate the defendant on legal expense if they lost in a lawsuit. So, for example, if the court um, they handle a decision that the defendant did not infringe um, the plaintiff's rights um, and the plaintiff request, um, then the court will order the defendant to pay some compensation to the plaintiff. So um, now I'm going to talk about the upcoming key changes in the IP landscape. Um, so as lots of you may know, um, Vietnam is working on revising the law on intellectual property and the amended law on intellectual property uh, will be expected to issue in uh, 2021, which is next year. So these are the changes that um, they are working on um, to introduce in the law. So first up for copyrights and related rights, um, as committed under the EVFTA, Vietnam will join the two major treaties by WIPO, uh, usually referred to as the internet treaties. Um, and we understand that the uh, Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism, um, which is responsible for copyright and rigid like right protections is preparing for CESAR um, to join those two treaties. For trademark, um, for the first time, Vietnam will protect non-traditional trademarks. So um, as, as of um, current date, Vietnam only protect traditional marks, which is um, made of signs that can be seen by our eyes. Uh, but in, in the next two or three years, um, and hopefully in the new uh, amendment law on IP, uh, Vietnam introduced uh, protection of sound marks. Um, so for example, a piece of music or a ringing tone um, of cell phones or even scent marks. Um, so for example, a smell of food, um, of cookies or um, you know, pasta can be protected as trademark. Um, there's also important uh, changes relating to provisional measures, which basically um, allow IP owners to have more tools to deal with IP infringement. So under current regulation in Vietnam, there are some uh, conditions that must be met um, in order for the right holder to request uh, the application of provisional measures. But under the FTA, um, the provisional measures can be even easier to be applied uh, by the court or by the competent authority uh, to prevent um, you know, further damages caused to the IP owners uh, or you know, sometimes uh, prevent the, the infringers or the defendant uh, to disperse um, you know, evidence of infringement, um, et cetera. In terms of injunctions um, relating to the to the court, um, uh, the EVFTA extends the jurisdiction of the court, and now um, the party whose service are being used by the infringer, so i.e. the intermediary uh, people, uh, can be subject to the injunctions. So, for example, those who provide service of storage transportation or management of infringing goods, um, then they can also be subject to the injunctions granted by the court. Presumption of ownership, this is also very important because usually we've seen um, one of the tactics tried to use by infringer is to uh, cause some disruption to IP owners by filing um, invalidation requests against their registrations. And so this requirement um, is actually says that Vietnam must recognize the, the principle of presumption of ownership. Uh, for example, if the owners have a trademark registration certificate or a copyright registration certificate, then that is the uh, evidence of ownership. Okay, due to uh, the time constraint, now I will go to the two case study. Um, in very recently, uh, you know, so the first case is, is around an ex-official actions against fake condoms. 
So uh, several years ago, usually authorities would need um, to review complaints. Um, so they need to see complaints coming from IP owners in order to take actions. But um, there's more and more actions taken by themselves at their own initiatives to protect uh, the rights of IP owners. So in June last year, the Economic, of Police, the Economic Police of Ho Chi Minh City and the National Economic Police, they actually um, discovered and conducted the raid action into a truck loaded of um, counterfeits. Then they also um, inspected the Infinito warehouse uh, and production area. Um, there are around hundreds of thousands of counterfeits and a large number of unfinished products, machines and materials to manufacture such counterfeits. Um, this, this case uh, was huge because of the number of counterfeits uh, goods seized and the case was then escalated into criminal prosecution um, and is ongoing. In case study two, um, it's about a domain name dispute. Um, so there is a, a, a German company um, named OS uh, GmbH. They produce um, lighting apparatus um, and they operate in Vietnam and found out about the two local domain names, um, osram.com.vn and osram.vn, um, registered by a local company. Um, and so OS GmbH filed a lawsuit um, to the court. But before doing that, uh, they, they you know, um, obtained sufficient evidence of infringement. First, they filed a request to VPRI, which is um, Vietnam Intellectual Property Research Institute under Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, they will be responsible for issuing expert opinions um, uh, so OS GmbH was able to obtain the assessment conclusion on China infringement. Um, and it also proceeded with documenting the evidence of infringement through a belief office. So these are the two infringing websites. So uh, what they did was they captured the evidence of infringement on the websites um, under the, with the presence of a, a notary, notary officer. Um, so all of the evidence was submitted to the court um, and the court um, in Hanoi um, granted a decision in favor of the plaintiff. Um, so the, even though the, the domain name uh, was returned to the plaintiff, but only partial um, or part of their request uh, for damages was granted. So the plaintiff um, claimed for around 5 million Vietnamese dong, um, which is around 21,700,000 oh, of US dollars. Um, but they wouldn't, they were uh, not granted with that material damage. Um, okay, that's, uh, that's about it for my presentation. Um, thank, thank you, you very, very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Mrs. Yen Bu, Country Manager of Rules Legal Vietnam and Chairwoman of IPR Committee at, at the Eurocham. Uh, we're a bit uh, of the, the timing of the limit uh, now, so I would like to, to thank again. We won't have time to, to go through the questions uh, right now, uh, but again, uh, we will go through the online uh, consulting sessions for those who have required one. Again, do not hesitate to ask questions to the CCIV, to IPR, to VCCI, to Rules Legal. Um, we are ready to answer your questions. We work hard uh, to make sure we understand the details of the EVFTA, the impact uh, of EVFTA in terms of IPR, in terms of uh, custom duties. It's not only custom duties, it's a lot of things to, to detail. Thank you so much uh, to the speakers today. Uh, we, we learned a lot. Thank you so much for joining this presentation today. And uh, I'm sure we will organize, we will be happy to organize other uh, presentation with our partners uh, from VCCI, from IPR Help Desk, and uh, from Eurocharm and uh, Ruse Legal. Thank you so much. Have a nice day in Europe and have a nice uh, beginning of evening in Vietnam. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.